Greetings and good day, Indubians. Thanks for tuning in to the new episode here. Uh, this episode is with Bob Doyle, and um, this marks a kind of milestone for the Indubious podcast. We were we were contacted by his publicist to come on and speak, and when I read his bio, I was like, wow, this is Bob Doyle, the guy from The Secret, because I watched that movie so much when I was younger, and I totally remember him and you know his parts, and so... You know, this is a lot higher profile than we have done in the past. And people are finding out about us and wanting to come on and speak. So uh, I was a bit nervous, honestly. Um, you can tell through the podcast that <clears throat> I got more, com I, you know, I was obviously comfortable with Bob. He's a great dude. And we agree on a whole lot. And we had a lot of fun. Uh, it was a great conversation. And, um, just pretty, pretty dang stoked that this came together. And um, I would like to ask of all of you out there, if you can leave us um, some reviews, leave us a nice chunky five-star review on uh, Apple Podcasts app. Um, that would be awesome. Or you can favorite our, you could favorite our podcast on Spotify, give it a heart, give it a like and a follow or whatever, you know, whatever the heck heck happens. All that support really counts for us. This episode is also sponsored by our friends, Dream Herbally. We're um, going to have them on our next podcast. We're going to be interviewing them. Um, so stay tuned for that. They make herbal teas that can enhance your dream state. They can help you remember your dreams. They can make your dreams more vivid. And in my case, now I've had two lucid dreams after drinking this tea. Um, the tea tastes great. It's tasty. They also make other kinds of tea too. They make um, Ayurvedic uh, health blends and they make ones uh, that increase your libido and sexuality and all sorts of stuff. So um, head over to their website, dreamherbally.com and check them out. They are solid people that are supporting this podcast. So if that doesn't say enough about them, I don't know what would. Um, if you smoke weed, if you are a frequent cannabis user, chances are you don't remember your dreams and, um, this stuff will snap you into some pretty legit dream space, baby. Let's get started on the episode. I hope you guys like it. It is your call. It is your game. It is your creation. Oh my God. to have an optimal theory for playing the game. Whatever you focus upon becomes your truth. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the episode. This podcast is a place where we open our hearts. We display true aspects of ourselves and our human experience without judgment so others may benefit from them and connect to the energy that we aim to create more of in the world. Through this energy, may we lay down the burden of fear and doubt. This is the Living in Dubiously podcast. Today, we have a special guest. We have Bob Doyle. Bob Doyle is best known for his contribution to the film and book, The Secret. I know you guys have seen The Secret. I watched it on repeat back, you know, 15, 20 years ago, I guess. It's been now. Bob is a brain rewirer, a law of attraction expert, a trainer and coach. Bob, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. How are you it, doing? It's great to be here, Evan. Thanks. I'm doing well. Good, good. Um, the impact that... To, it's hard for me to put into words the impact that The Secret has had on my life. You know, it kind of sent me on a path of understanding that I was attracting my reality and knowing that I could change it. And it, it wasn't really until later on in life that when I discovered the works of Abraham Hicks mm -hmm. that I truly was able to receive results. And I guess I would say that I was left from the secret feeling like there were some untold aspects or maybe some holes that need to be filled. And it seems like through your work, what I've been um, witnessing and reading online is that uh, you feel the same way because there's been plenty of advancements in your, you know, in your stuff. Can you talk to us a little bit about 
what's transpired in the 20 years yeah, for sure. you. So I think I was, when, when the law of attraction came into my life, I think I responded pretty much like a lot of people did when they saw the secret for the first time. Like, wow, this is amazing. I want to know more. I want to know how this works. And so I had, you know, I, I, will, I will spare you the whole journey to that. But I mean, I, I set out my, my life to be a broadcaster. And when that didn't turn out to be the creative outlet, like I wanted to Like a radio broadcaster? Be, that's right. I wanted to you hide from voice, people man. behind a microphone. That was you it. The voice. And do my voices and be a goofball. <laughs> and and um, But then I, I, I just couldn't find that. I didn't have the creative freedom in a major market like Atlanta to do that. So I got a little disillusioned and impatient, as, as I will be when you're 22, and just started jumping around from career to career. Anyway, that led me eventually to the law of attraction because I was like, why is nothing working in my life? Yeah. And, and so I had some pretty significant ahas around it, looking at the science piece, the quantum physics piece, the, mm-hmm. you know, that our thoughts have real power and vibration right. and all of those good law of attraction-y things. That just, it, it just appealed to my sense. Like it, it didn't seem too woo-woo for me. Like I could get the science of it. Yeah. And so as a result of that, that's how I had my results with, with, with anything I attempted with the law of attraction. So then I put together my first program and started teaching it. And my whole position was the science of it, trying to talk as practically as possible. Did a lot of talking about vibration and energy and resonance and all that stuff, you know, that everybody else talks about. Mm -hmm. But after 20 years of doing this, I started to see that a lot of people, and I'm talking about the majority of people who get really excited about the law of attraction, just they spend all their time trying to figure out the law of attraction and unravel this mystery and get it right. And is my vision board right? And all this, their attention is completely in the wrong place. They've become obsessed with it because it's just, it's, it's sexy, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, but that doesn't get results. And it's really slow. You hear a million different techniques, a million different ways that the law of attraction works. But here's the aha moment that twist the whole thing for me in terms uh-huh. of how I do this. I just had an awakening to when does reality really get created? And a law of attraction person might say, oh, well, you know, when I put it in the vision board or when it's first my you know, thought or whatever it is, mm. but your reality is created in the moment that mm. you give that moment meaning. Like right now, you're creating your reality because you're making meaning out of everything. Some of it's conscious, some of it's unconscious, but this is your reality. And the meaning that you're making out of everything, whether you like it, don't like it, it could be better, how you're feeling about yourself, it's all determined by the wiring of your brain, the mm. things you have learned, the, the thought, the belief systems that have literally been biologically wired into your brain that are, by the way, unique to you. You know, the, yeah. you, we all create literally our own reality, our own lens through which we see the world. And a lot of us share common wiring and we can agree on some things and we have, we're able to have society, et cetera. But there are times, and we see it more and more, when our wiring shows itself, when we view the world through our truth that is our wiring, and yet our neighbor sees the same world through their truth and has a completely different experience. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and all of that's based on their wiring. So ultimately, your experience of reality, your enjoyment of it, have you arrived? Am I worthy? All of it is based on your wiring, which can be changed. And that's the key. Neuroplasticity, brain rewiring, more and more people are talking about it now. And, and it's about freaking time because it's how we learn everything. Yeah. And all we're learning, personal transformation is really just about learning to be a different person, a different version of yourself. And so how do we learn anything? Repetition, consistency, making it non-negotiable. So instead of spending all this time trying to figure out vibration and all that, let's just figure out who you really want to be. Who do you need to be to get those results, attract them, whatever terminology you want to use? Who do you need to be? And let's start being that today. And to be that fully and completely, you have to rewire. So that's what my work is about now helping people to rewire themselves to the person that they truly want to be. So do you believe that we're changing our, literally changing our reality through our perspective? Or do you believe that when we change our perspective, the way we're looking at our reality shifts? I, how are those different? Exactly. Well, that's my point. That's kind of where I was getting at is that, you know, there's, this metaphysical aspect of we're, we're magic and we're tr- attracting this reality. And it's, it's, it's this thing that is kind of looked at at woo woo in some, in, in, from some people's perspective, but from a sim, a, a, a simple cause and effect 
perspective, it's like when we change, when we change the way we look at things, the way the things we look at change. Yes. And when we shift the smallest parts of who we're being, the world cannot help but respond differently. And so these people who just stare at their vision board and visualize all day, and that's it, waiting for the magic to happen and are frustrated because why? I'm feeling as if I have it now. I used to do that. All of those tools (laughs) need to move you into action to inspire you to see in your mind, your imagination, your, it's, it's this magical, we truly do have the most amazing reality creation tool ever in Uh our brains. And it's all about how we perceive this, this stuff. So we're going to attract things, if you will. Yeah. But what we do with that attraction is still up to our wiring. Like from the Mm -hmm. outside, it could look like, and to anybody else, we've attracted the perfect situation. But if our wiring is that it's not good enough, or we're not good enough, or, you know, we're not experiencing the same reality that anyone else is. So it's really, it's, it's, it's really all individual. Totally. Yeah. And, and so I do coaching like yourself, and what I commonly use as uh, an example is I use my life story because, you know, I was born with cystic fibrosis and um, had this kind of pretty gloomy outlook from the doctors. And, you know, I had a double lung transplant and blah, 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 blah. And when I tell people that story, typically they go, gosh, that's so terrible. I'm so sorry about that. And I don't feel that way at all. I don't feel sorry about it. My perspective on it is that it was the gift that was handed to me to create my reality, to turn me into the person that I am. And it's a pretty tremendous gift that I, that I now have that perspective. And so when I give people that story, it allows them to kind of see their lives through that light. It, it, I think it really is, I I I don't want to call it simple because I know it takes applied practice and dedication, but it really is as basic as shifting your perspective. And when you shift your perspective in something like that, it's such a powerful tool that kind of gives you, it gives you momentum. So, and you can build off that momentum and start to see tragedy through a lens of gratitude and perfection. And and (laughs) it's eventually, yes, eventually that comes. I mean, eventually that comes, but when people are first starting their journey, it's hard for them, you know, to see that. And, and, and here's the, here's the truth about transformation is if when you're being intentional about it, like Mm -hmm. I want it to happen faster than it would just normally through the natural progression of time, you're going to feel it more. You're going to feel going up against your wiring and the law of attraction conversation we talked we said resistance but what is that it's just this wiring that isn't in alignment with where you need to be where you, where it needs to be so whenever you, and once you're aware of it you say okay well i need to replace whatever this constant thought that i'm giving myself that is perpetuating this wiring i need to change that thought with one yeah. that is more in alignment with where I need to be. And it's going to feel really uncomfortable and it's going to feel goofy and you're like you're lying to yourself. Yeah, totally normal. You don't beat yourself up for that. You just go, yeah, this is how I'm, I'm putting it. Just like when we learn anything new, there's that learning curve. That's that discomfort. And we just accept that. If we learn a new language, we just accept that. When we learn to walk, we accept that we're going to fall down. It Because it's non-negotiable. And we're all just too flimsy about our goals. If they become non-negotiable, like you know why you must be that person mm-hmm. who's going to have that life and contribute that value. When you know why you must do that, then you just go through the process. And yeah, sometimes you're going to make quote unquote mistakes and you're going to get feedback. A law yeah. of attraction person might go, well, the universe doesn't want it for me, which makes me insane. It's like if Edison did that, if anybody who invented anything <clears throat> approached that with that, oh, well, I tried three times. It's clearly just not, I'm, I'm going against resistance. It should flow. Yeah. Let the re- let that feedback be part of the flow. You know, that's all up to you. You get yeah. feedback, you adjust, you get feedback, you adjust. And, and you have to have all that to become the person. You don't just magically like have all the success and the stuff and all that stuff and not have any idea how you got there or have anything that's going to perpetuate it. You got to be that person and then it will come slash be attracted to you. Yeah. I I appreciate that perspective a whole lot. Um, The whole, the universe doesn't want it for me is a, is a, is a common, easy, spiritually bypassy cop out, you know Um, the universe doesn't have it in or out for you. It's, kind of it's 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 the meaning we apply to things absolutely it's our applied perspective of the meaning of experiences you know here's my take on it 
yeah. with the universe. And I got this from I got this from reading Science of Getting Rich, which I don't know if you've read that, but if you haven't, you got I have it. not. Yeah, I read it a couple. Of, I read it when I first started my journey and said, "Yeah, okay, I get it. Visualize, act as if, blah blah blah." Yeah. Two, three years ago, or whatever it's been now, I read it had a whole new perspective, probably because of how I've been teaching it over the course of time. Mm. But one of the big distinctions, and I got many, was that if you think about it, you know, everything is energy. We know this. The universe is a mass ocean of energy, and we are just a part of it. We are a physical what we call a physical extension of the universe. And through this, we have all of these amazing senses and we can have sensory experiences and we have passion and joy and the whole emotional thing. We get to have the feeling of accomplishment and love and er everything that is unique to this configuration of energy. Yeah. We are here. I would like to for people to, to, to ponder this, consider this, that we are here so the universe can experience itself. Yeah. And we have good feelings and we have bad feelings. And of course, the good feelings feel good because they're better. So we want the universe wants what we want. That's the bottom line. If we have a passion, if we have a drive, it's if a dream, it's been implanted to us for to to go get. And anything that's telling us we can't get it is just wiring that we received from zero to seven, right? Without any filter whatsoever. And we learn the basics of what's possible for us. And then that was just sort of we went on autopilot through our adult years and just got wired with the original based on the original wiring wiring that we received which really had no inherent truth in it it just mm. was what that was yeah but I all feel of it like, i feel like a, um a lot of the wiring too is is cultural um you know we're kind of sold the the basic this is shifting too so i don't want to i don't want to want to you know speak speak poorly of it but i th i feel like the basic cultural <clears throat> idea that we're sold is that we live in a material universe and we are victims of circumstance and that we you know have to position ourselves financially and emotionally in defense of the world you know it's this kind of this this basic materialism that we're sold and it's such a bummer to <laughs> How, I don't know how people live with that and only that. And so it's become, obviously it's become both of our journeys is to share magic, you know, to share hope and bring, you know, true, true value to the human experience of what we really are here for, of, um, you know, experiencing and growing and, and manifesting and having struggles and having true difficult hardships, which are opportunities for us to get stronger. And like, that's, that's the beauty of life, you know? Yeah. And, and, and when you can really, again, you get that. I found that as I've gotten older, you know, it's easier for me to see that it's easier for me to see how, Oh, all that crap yeah. had to happen. Had if to it happen. didn't happen, I wouldn't have this. Yeah. You know, and so the more, the older you get, the more of those moments you have until now, it's just like you, you truly, it sounds, it almost sounds too metaphysical, but this, you know, to say it's all divine because you just never, what you learn is you never know, no matter what, how bad it is now. And of course, you know, this, no matter how bad it seems right now, it, there is something that can, should you choose that can, that can come out of it. It'd be amazing. Yeah. The, the, how other people can benefit from your experiences is you just have no idea if you are willing to embrace that and share that and share your experiences and put your true value out in the world and, embr and embrace the history of your life. And I think the earlier that you accept that truth, that, that hardship and struggle leads to, you know, growth and beauty and that that is going to come, the earlier you accept that reality, the sooner you're going to see it through that struggle. That struggle is going to make itself seen earlier what the blessing is out of it, you know, just by accepting that reality. It's true. But, you know, we aren't taught that. I mean, we're not that basically, generally speaking, we aren't taught that all this bad stuff is going to lead to good stuff and all that. Yeah. I mean, some people know it. Some circles know it. Yeah. But, but you know, it's, it's really just, it keeps coming back to my attention that, you know, I've been in this personal development world now for like 20 years. I didn't even mean to get into it. But, you know, in my <laughs> world, everybody's heard of it. 
But the real world, there's still a gazillion people who have never seen The Secret, never heard of it, don't even know what personal development is. The very concept that they can change anything about their lives is completely foreign to them. Mm. And that just blows my mind. Yeah. You know, because they've got such a fixed, they've got such a fixed view of reality and what's possible for them. They don't know anything about wiring or that they were programmed or, and it doesn't, it's not even a matter of intellect. It's like you said, it's cultural. Where have they been brought up? You know, it's just like some people just don't get that information. And so they're, they just feel trapped and everything seems woo woo or hard to believe or, you know, any kind of transformation. And yet those same people can go to YouTube any given day and see dozens of stories of real transformation of people who started worse than they'll ever be and have gone to do incredible things. So yeah. there's a cognitive dissonance. They see that it is possible to create miracles in your life and to transform in ways that you couldn't, that no one would imagine, especially yourself. And yet they can't see it for themselves. They can see that it's happened, but it's not for them. And that's all just wiring. That's all just a belief system. There's no logic to it. There's none, but it's, yeah. they're telling themselves that it's, it's not logical to dream that way. Anyway, that's what we're here to do is bust up all that. Exactly. Shine light man. on that. That's, that's, that's what we're both doing. So, um, I, I do see the world changing and I see people waking, you know, people that have never been into this energy in my life that are, that are, that are getting more into it. And I, I do believe that there's a collective energy of the earth that makes it easier for people to, to, to reach these kind of understandings. And, you know, the way that I see it most is in my music to where, you know, I've been making a similar style and you know, with a, you know, spiritually intentioned music for, you know, my whole adult life. And in the beginning, people were kind of like, yeah, that's kind of cool. You know, it's kind of, your music's a little weird. And now people are like, oh, where have you guys been my whole life? You know, and I'm like, we've been right here. Where have you been, man? We've been waiting for you. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You, you and it, it's, it's a tricky thing. As, as you guys know, um, positive music, it's like some people will roll their eyes at it because oh, some of yeah. it is kind of eye rolly. Yeah. But like what you guys have, you know, you've dialed into it. And when the people, and there's more and more people dialing into it, right? Being able to to, to play music that doesn't sound dorky, lyrics that aren't dorky, yeah. you know, and that really to speak. I and mean, that's what you just described to me is speaking to an audience who really needs to hear it, who maybe couldn't hear it any other way. Yeah, yeah. And we're we're making it easier by us doing the work that we're doing and spreading it, you know, far and wide, we're making it easier for the whole, for the whole earth to come to that realization. We're essentially aiding in the collective vibrational upliftment of the earth. But here we are getting into these, getting into these woo woos. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and and look, here's the thing. You know, I just because I've I've done so many since I've started talking about rewiring instead of law of attraction. I've had yeah. I've had some people think that I'm completely anti law of attraction, like negating everything I ever said. I'm not negating right. any of it. I'm just saying that people are putting their attention on that and that they don't need to do that. It's like putting your attention on gravity to make sure your glass will fall if you let go of it. It'll handle itself. You just do what you're here to do. Totally. And the universe will take care of you. No, I, just feel, I feel that, man. And it's almost like you've made the realization that asking people to believe in science is easier than asking them to believe in in. Uh, uh, unicorns and so it's like you're but you're teaching the same thing but you're they teaching still, it yes. with they with still a need to get clear on their vision they still need to do it's part of my process is visualization we are using the brain yeah but we're, we're approaching it from a scientific and biological framework mm. so that everyone can just accept it like there's no people can argue the law of attraction forever but yeah. no one's arguing that the brain can change that's just a given so yeah. there's nothing to debate let's just get into it And like, there's a lot, there's plenty of other people talking about all the different science of the brain and well, this is doing this and this part's doing this. I'm like, okay, but nobody needs to know that. Yeah. It's just, just, that's just more stuff. It's like more stuff, like with the law of attraction. It's like, Mm. we're just learning. We're just, this, you said it, it's, it is simple what we're doing. It's just not easy because we've got years of wiring that is fighting against that kind of change. Yeah. You know, it's just, and that's why the, the personal development success rate out there is abysmal. Because you do need to, you have to do whatever it is you're doing long enough for the wiring to change if it's going to be a true lasting transformation. So getting excited about a seminar or a book or a movie for a few weeks or whatever, and and you don't, and none of it takes you, um, uh, has you 
take different action, be a different way, you're obviously you're not going to get any different result out there. Your mm-hmm. old wiring is that you've had your whole life is going to take over eventually and you'll be right back. And that's why, you know, that's why we have coaches and things like that, you know, community support and it, you need it. You, there's yeah. things you just, you need because of the way we've been wired so far. Yeah. Um, I feel like settling back into old patterns is so easy. And even, even if they're negative, it's comforting. Yes. It's that uncomfortable comfort. I know how to do this. I know how to be this miserable. I know how to be angst about this. I know how to blame them. I know how to (laughs) worry about money. Like I've been doing this for years. I, this is comfortable, but it's that uncomfortable, but they, they'd rather have that than the discomfort of growth. But that's mostly because they haven't thought it through. They haven't really gelled that vision. They just know they don't like this. They're not clear enough about who they get to be yeah. and what's going to happen and, and how they're going to impact the world and the things they get to do and, uh, you know, just what their life becomes. They're not, they haven't sold themselves yet on their own transformation. And so when it gets tricky, they just go back to the, you know, uncomfortable comfort. Yeah. So when you're, when you, um, let's say you're coaching a new client, what is the, f- what are the first things that you want to establish with them to understand how to help them the best? What is the, first, I want to understand their current wiring. Like what are the things that are their autopilot triggers that stop them when they're going for something that's important to them. Right. And it shows up in different ways. We even, we put actually a quiz together to gauge this. We have a transformation personality type quiz. There's lots of personality type quizzes out there. This Mm -hmm. is none of those. This is something I did based on my own experience that gives me the information that I need and they need to be able to see how they are running on autopilot currently. Because if you're going to change your autopilot behavior on intentionally, you need to know what it is. So the quiz is a 60 second online multiple choice thing. They just click through, they get a type, they get an answer and there's nothing wrong with these types. And, and just because you are one of these types doesn't even mean you're going to sabotage yourself. But if you're finding yourself kind of in a loop or feel like you're sabotaging yourself, then, then knowing that knowing what these, these traits are can help you. That's, yeah. that's, that's the purpose of the quiz. And then, so you take the quiz, you find out your type, and then we give you information on here's what you can do with that to help you. Yeah. And so, and then we talked about, maybe I would do this quiz um, here on the podcast, and then you could talk to me a little bit about my personality, transformation personality type. I thought that would be interesting. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. I, I invite everybody to, to take a minute. Like <laughs> I said, it's very easy and it doesn't take very long at all. Okay. And the results are right there. You'll get a PDF that'll get sent to you with more details and a little video that you can watch after the podcast if you watch that. But what if you go take the quiz now, and it's tptquiz.com. Yeah. If so you, you go can take, take it, it now, now with me while I'm doing it, if you want. Yeah, I'm trying so to I'm, fill the space. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> if you go take that quiz and get those results, then when in a minute here, we'll talk about what the, just kind of give you a brief overview of the, of the four different types we've identified. And you, you know, by that time you'll know what type you are. So you'll be able to see, oh yeah, that's my behavior and all that. I think it, I, I know for a fact, I don't think I know for a fact it will be helpful for you. And once you take this now, see, then you can't unknow it. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to know the next time it creeps up that you're, you're feeling that it's going to be this reminder. And that's the whole point. Red to give pill, you those moments pill. of choice. So um, let's do this too. What's your guess of what transformation personality type that I am? What do you think? Hmm. That's a good question because you're a pretty plugged in guy. I don't know. I, the most people are seekers. You know, that, that's, the, that's the number one thing. But I don't know. I feel like you're, that could be you. But given the other ones, maybe a wizard. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's let's t- write these down: seeker or wizard. Okay, and we'll see. Yeah, so, I'm just not sure because hey, we've only had this one conversation. Now, with, I'm definitely clients, a seeker in general. With clients, when I have a conversation with them, it generally doesn't take very long to you know to identify. And again, on any given day, you might test for a different type. It just kind of depends on where you're at, what you're up to, where your focus is, and doesn't negate. Either one, because if you've yeah. got those traits, you've got those traits. Okay. And so now you've got two different lights that you can shine on and two different, yeah. uh, you know, pattern or behavioral patterns that you can recognize. That then you can uh, make another choice. That's really okay. what this is all about. It's about waking you up, 
so that in the moment during the course of your day, you have these moments of choice where you go, okay, this is the way I've always been and I'm not getting the result I want. What is a behavior? What's the opposite of this or whatever? What could I do now that would be more in alignment with the person I need to be or would really like to be? Yeah. How would I like to respond in this situation? So our work is about giving you that ahead of time so that, you know, you're not just like, oh, I'm in autopilot. What do I do? You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Um, I'm going to walk people through this as I take it, okay? So um, the first question is, what's your experience with personal transformation? And the answers are, I easily attain my transformation goals. And the next one is, I have achieved a lot, but I'm struggling to take the results to the next level. Um, I would probably, I agree with both of those, but I probably would fall into the, I easily attain my transformation goals. Um, What is your experience with the law of attraction? I feel like I'm an expert at it. I manifest things easily. I have what seems like intermittent success, but it's very inconsistent. I feel like I've tried everything but have no success. So what am I doing wrong? Well, similar to the last one, I'm kind of in between the first two. Like, I feel like I'm good at it. And I do also feel like it's good, uh, inconsistent. Um, yeah, maybe I'll go with the inconsistent one to kind of balance it out. What typically describes you when you have a goal? I'm 100% committed and I don't stop taking action until I achieve the goal. Yeah, that's me. I didn't have to read the other ones. <laughs> right. It's good. See, it can be it can be quick. Obviously, when you're reading it out loud, it will take less, yeah, more right. than a minute. But. Yeah. Which of the following emotions would you say you spend most of your time feeling? Happiness, sadness, anxiety, fear, apathy. I'm going to go with happiness. I'm pretty happy. That tracks. Um, how much time, if any, do you spend thinking about? Sorry, this thinking about and defining your personal and professional vision. My vision is always at the forefront of my mind. I devote an hour or so to focus on my vision. I'm going to go with I devote an hour or so a day, probably. When it comes to the possibility of profound transformation for yourself and your life, what rings most true for you? I've had experiences in the past that led me to doubt that I can do it or that processes actually work. I tend to be influenced by the opinions of others when I take on personal transformation. Despite sporadic results, I enjoy the process of learning and exploring new ideas and possibilities. The universe has my back as long as I believe I will attract whatever I desire. Again, I'm kind of in between that one and the one before. I'm going to go with that one. The universe has my back. I I genuinely believe that. When it comes to taking feedback from others, I welcome all forms of feedback easily and able to accept it unemotionally without reaction. Yeah, that's me. Mostly. (laughs) And so I'll put in my info here and then my email so I can get the the result. And then should I go um, get the result of my email, I guess? Well, it'll show you on the page. You don't have to go to Wizard. Mm -hmm. So shall I start uh, just talk about the wizard? Because I would have tested for, uh, so there's, the wizard is one of the types I would have tested for as well, even though I'm a, 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 you know, part of my process, part of the struggles I had with all of this was that I'm, you know, I'm the son of a school teacher, very logical, no woo woo upbringing, no yeah. new age, no metaphysics, any of that. But there was something that really appealed to me about the physics of this. And the, and it felt, you know, the energy part of it, it felt wizardry, you know, yeah. but, 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 but more than that, I think I had a different type, which we'll talk about in a minute, but the wizard is the person who, you know, likes that kind of stuff we were just talking about. They love the ritual. They love the vision boards. They love, you know, the, that, the, the, you know, the, the conjuring part of it. Mm -hmm. They like that part. Now the, the problem, and there's nothing wrong with it unless that's all they do. And we basically spoke to that a little while ago. The wizard is the one who can sometimes, not always, but sometimes get so caught up in the ritual and the trust and the faith that they don't, they don't move into action or do the thing. Got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, again, that it doesn't sound like you, but you might have those characteristics. No, I and, do. And- I do have that, Bob. I, I often struggle 
with that precise thing that you're saying where it's like, do I go out and paper the town to try to get what I want and like contact people and email them? Or do I wait for the reality to align for me? Ah. And I was literally having a, f a conversation with my friend just the other day. Like, which one of those is right? I, I, I still debate it. So, so what I would coach you on is who is the person? So what, so you're papering all that stuff for what, what goal? Um, let's say, um, I'm trying to get, so the, the, the trailer for the documentary you watch that we have a yes. full length documentary and I'm trying to get, um, that like dis distribution and support from various business entities. Okay. So the person who got that, you're in the future, the person who got that done, right? Like they got that done. What did they do? They contacted the person. <laughs> yeah. They freaking went out and did it. Yeah, they did it. And what they do and how they use their wizard skills is, is visualizing that, imagining going up to the thing and having the conversation and how they're going to respond and how confident you are that this is the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like without the ego, you know what I'm saying? Like, who do you need to be for everybody to, for all the right people to say yes yeah. to you, right? But it is going to take going out there and doing it. And it's going to benefit you, right? You make all those new relationships, et cetera. I mean, it's, it's the right, it's what the successful version of you would do. Yeah. I, I hear that. The, the reason that I, that I get confused on the way to do it is because of my personal experience. So I'll give you a, a, a little synopsis of, of my experience with manifestation. Um, so I've been in a band, you know, yep. my, just pretty much my whole adult life. And with limited success, really, in the beginning. And, I, you know, I don't want to trivialize it. I, obviously, we had a bunch of great shows and good time and tons of stuff. But really, as far as where I wanted to be, I was always left wanting more. And then I discovered the the Abraham Hicks. Just like I just started listening to Abraham Hicks YouTube videos and podcasts and really started inundating myself with the information. And I essentially, what I decided to do was take time off from even thinking about anything music wise, because my, the way that w when I thought about music in my career, it didn't feel even p pleasing to think about it. I was mm. associated with anxiety and not having what I wanted. So I took time off of that to simply get my vibration in alignment and focus on things that felt really good and focus in ways in which I was grateful. And I literally can't, we literally canceled our shows and didn't play for like six months. And so through this time, I really did, I really did shift the way that I thought and that I, and the way that I felt. And what I noticed to start happening was we just literally started attracting things. Literally things kind of fell in our lap. People started contacting us to come and play festivals and shows and things just became way more effortless and way, um, and more fun. Yes. And so having that experience and, and seeing firsthand the way that I was manifesting by like non-doership. Yes, it, but, you know, but still you were, it's, there is something in your being and we're not always going to understand it all. Yeah. But somehow you, who you were being was, I, I'm going to take a step back. You canceled shows, you did this thing. Yeah. And that allowed some ripple effect of reset to happen out there yeah. in a very, in all in a very logical way that seems magical now. But, but, but believe me, there was a, a logical series of events that unfolded as a result of you being that person. So it seems woo woo and magical sometimes because we don't know what the hell happened there. How did this yeah. just, why did this all start to happen? And, and, and I'm not saying to not look at it in that way because at the energetic level, it is all that cool right. stuff. It is a line, but, but people to, too many people can't get their heads wrapped around that and you don't need to. It's cool if you can do it. If you can, then great. Then you get to appreciate all the law of attraction and the magic of it. But if it's holding you up, just know that you don't have to do that, that those results come for explainable reasons, Yeah. but they come, that, but they start with who are you being? Yeah. And, and, and maybe it was as simple as I was no longer desperate when I talked to people. Yes, that's huge. That's huge you know? because that energy, that that invisible communication, you know, we can have a big smile on your face and sound like you know what you're talking about, but there's that invisible communication. If you're really yeah. scared, if you're really filled with fear, if you really have a lack of confidence, they're going to pick up on it. Sometimes yeah. it's just a little tiny micro expression in your face 
which can change with just these simple practice, rewiring practices every day so that you rehearse being that new way so that you are genuinely confident in that moment and not like you're pretending. Yeah. And can we talk about some rewiring practices and, and what that, and what that is? Well, sure. I mean, so again, I, I'm all about using this brain for what it's for, and that's just to create an experience for you one way or the other. So visualizing, again, we our experience of reality is based on this wiring, which has mostly been unconscious and very firmly in place. And yeah. so now we want to change our experience of reality, which we have now discussed comes from changing our wiring. It will change the perception of how of what's coming to us, and it will also change who we are being in the world so that the things that come to us for us to perceive can be different. So it starts with what's the gap between who am I being now and who do I need to be to have that life? And that's just thinking about it a little bit or using other people as inspiration who you know have done similar things. It's just getting clear on that vision. A lot of times it's identifying the times in your day where you feel disempowered, like you know you don't want to be that. So we spot, we shine a light on that. Like I ask people to notice that when that happens. And now it's like part of our work is journaling. Who do you want who, in that situation? Who would you have liked to have been? How would you have liked that to have gone? And then you, and then you run it in your head, in your imagination with full feeling, very law of attraction, -y, but it's actually biology. It's, you know, athletes do it all the time. Right. They, so it's not, there's nothing woo woo about this. It's science. So we're, we're, we're running this scenario of us being a different way with full emotion of it over and over and over and over as much as we want. It's free. <laughs> and, and the more we do it, the more comfortable we're going to be in those exact situations. Cause we've been there, done that. It'll feel a little bit differently nuanced when it's happening in the physical, but you'll know different ways to react. You'll be armed and ready with a different way of being. And when the first time you be it, the person, if that's the situation, it's going to have to respond to that. Yeah. There's going to be a different result. Yeah. So, um, journal journaling is, a something that I love and, and definitely promote to my clients as well. Um, I love the practice of, you know, just having a positivity journal, you know, and, and getting really good at, knowing what feels good. And the reason why I feel, I feel like it's so easy to go on autopilot and just allow your thoughts to happen. And when I just allow my thoughts to happen, they're generally kind of, ne they're generally kind of negative, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't know, I don't know if that's just a result of my, you know, childhood or upbringing or, or, you know, well, we're Okay. There. Okay. Sorry. There so sorry go. about that. Oh, it's okay. Um, yeah, but we're surrounded by it. I mean, we're, we're generally taught to be skeptical about things, to look at things negatively and so on. Yeah. So it's no wonder that that's our autopilot. That's our go-to. That was my, the, I swear that I thought before I started doing this work, I thought I was doomed to that, to always having to go to the negative first, because that's even throughout my career in the secret, yeah. I was wired as a kid for that. I like to, to what could go wrong first. That's right. You know, and so I thought I was going to be that that was just it. But I have learned that I, I have changed that. That is not my go to. That is not my go to like it was before. But it took, again, repetition and who do I really want to be and what's the benefit of doing that? Like uh, this way of being, I get to be right about the negativity, but that's the only benefit. Right. Yeah. There's no positive. There's no good for arguing for that limitation. I should probably we could take this opportunity to talk about because there's still three other types. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. So the skeptic is the other type that I that's what I definitely would have tested for back then, because while I wanted to believe in all the woo woo and the magic and that I can have whatever I want, I still right. wanted the science. I wanted to know that I wasn't just, you know, chasing fairies or whatever, that, that this was a real thing. And so, but the skeptic, if you test for skeptic, again, there's nothing wrong with being a skeptic. It keeps you from doing a lot of stupid stuff. Yeah. But in, in the context of this conversation, we're talking about the type who is, who identifies themselves as a skeptic, which means that their first question when they're evaluating something for, for themselves is why won't this work for me? Not mm -hmm. how could this work for me? Why won't this work for me? So when you ask a question like that, you're going to get the answers. So if you ask, yeah. how could this work for me? Guess what? 
If you're willing, you're going to get those answers. And the skeptic can still be, see, a skeptic is a skeptic in this context because they don't want to look foolish. They consider themselves intellectual and logical. They don't want to be wrong, et cetera. So the best way for a skeptic to never be wrong about something is to figure out all the reasons why they won't do it, can't do it, shouldn't do it, you know, would be a waste of time to do it. So then they get to be right, but, yeah. but they don't grow. That's the problem. So, so what I invite the skeptics to do is to ask that different question. When you're looking at evaluating something that can make your life better, any kind of an opportunity, whatever, whatsoever, ask yourself, how could this work for me? You still may not do it, but you're asking a way better question. The answers that you're going to get are going to give you a better answer. So that's the skeptic. Okay. And so I'm, I definitely was a cross of, of skeptic and wizard. So the other two types that we talked about the seeker for a second, that's the number one. Most people who I meet anyway, because probably 20 years of being in the law of attraction community, they, that the law of attraction conversation definitely draws in the seekers, the people who are very committed to, to growth, but they jump from program to program to program because the law of attraction was after the secret, everybody had a different freaking law of attraction program out there. And right. if one didn't get the results in three days, they jumped to the other one and the other one and the other one and the other one. And, and, and that's how people very often progress through personal transformations. They just try a program and they go, oh, this guy's better. This guy's cheaper. This guy's promise, this girl, whatever. And the problem with that is you can't establish any wiring if you keep changing the input. Mm. And, and so you're just going to get this chaos. You're going to have all these different ideologies. Some of them may conflict. You know, it's just like the, the, the seeker needs to appreciate the aspect of themselves that wants to grow, but they need to, the, a lot of them, they tune into things. Well, I resonate with this one. Oh, now I resonate with this one. Just keep resonating with the one you originally did until you're done. Yeah. You know, it's like you, you got to, it, it's all about consistency. So the seeker just needs to understand that their brain isn't going to change if they never slow down and, and give it the same consistent thought. So okay. the last one, the last one is the people pleaser and the people pleaser is the most heartbreaking one and highly emotional, but these are people who also want the very best for themselves. Maybe they saw the secret and got all kinds of inspired. And now yeah. they have this huge dream. And the minute they start going forward or talking about it, the people in their lives start poo-pooing it. You know, telling them why they can't do it or making them feel bad for doing it or casting doubt on it or giving them a look, you know, that stuff. And what does the person do? They, they stop. They stop their journey so that those people won't be uncomfortable because they're mm -hmm. clearly making them uncomfortable and then they're making you uncomfortable. So let's just make everybody more comfortable. I'll just stop this. I'll just, this isn't going to happen for, they're probably yeah. right, et cetera. So the, uh, the obvious problem with that is nobody wins. The people that you're trying to make comfortable, believe me, they're still uncomfortable. They wouldn't be the type of person to poo-poo your dreams if they didn't have an inherent discomfort that has nothing to do with you. You just exposed it. Right. Right. And you, of course, are sacrificing your whole freaking life. You're going to live a version of being alive and taking in air, but you have a passion and a mission, something you want to do. And it's there, like I said, because the universe put it in you. And you should go for it. And you're mm -hmm. never going to feel that complete and that happiness unless you know you at least went for it. So if you don't go for it to make mom happy, you're basically committing some form of spiritual suicide because the life you're going to live from that point on is not yours. It's also not the one they want either. Yeah, so it's they're just never like going to be happy sort of, regardless. So the best thing you can do is go for it and succeed. And there's no guarantee that these people are going to get inspired and say, it is possible. I'll do it too. But they'll never do that if you don't. So yeah. you may as well go get the life you want. You'll meet new people who edify you, who support you, who aren't a constant struggle, who aren't giving you that look. I mean, that's the beauty of living a fully authentic life is because then you will be surrounded by the people. Eventually, you will surround yourself with the people who love that level of authenticity. You no longer have to pretend. You no longer have to suppress who you are so that you can keep this circle of friends who isn't helping you to grow. Yeah, and you end up inevitably attracting a more supportive circle of friends. Just Correct. That's just how and, and reality to, works. And you all uplift. That's why our, the work I do is all community-based, except for private coaching, of course. But we, the community is huge. Seeing other people succeed, going through the same stops, having, and you being able to see truth a different way for them. So that they, if they only see it this way, you could say, well, how about this? And then four other people say, well, how about these? It just, again, it just shatters the, oh my God, truth is so freaking plastic. So what do yeah. I want mine to be? Well, let me create one that really feels great. 
I may as well, because I'm making up the one that makes me feel crappy. Yeah. No, I, I'm the same way, man. I, you know, we, we all get to choose what we believe. So why not choose the most beneficial belief? Yeah. <laughs> why not and choose lot, the one that feels the best? Yeah, and a lot of, for a lot of people, that's because they feel they've gotten wired that they don't deserve it or that it's not for them or that the best is for someone else, which yeah. is all just wiring. There's no, this is another big yeah. distinction from reading the science to getting rich is this whole idea of being worthy and deserving. It's all just a bunch of crap. We're here. We're here. We've got passions into it. The universe has said, go. We're all exactly as worthy as worthy and deserving to have the life we want. Yeah. We're, we're here. Now go for it. So get, get the, if any ideas of worthiness was, came from another human being who has their own issues. So the, the whole thing that you have to earn it, deserve it, whatever, to have the life you want is just, it's, there's no logical sense to it. That's all yeah. just human made up ideology and we it, and society is rich with it a value system that was made up by people and they're all different all over the world so there's no one that's correct so find the one that works for you what makes you what pulls you into action and what has you play the biggest game that's yeah. the one that's right for you for sure man um you know the one the belief that works the best for me is that i have a destiny and there's nothing that's going to stop me from achieving it and realizing it. And even when I think that I'm making mistakes, I'm right on track because everything is conspiring for the greater benefit of humanity and the greater benefit of me and you is the greater benefit of humanity. So right. nothing is outside of the realm of perfection. And even when tragedy strikes and it seems like things are falling apart, things are truly just falling into place. Yes. And the sooner that we accept that, the easier it is to see. And so since that's become my belief, that's my reality. That's what happened. That's what's happening to me day in and day out. Right. And nobody can tell you different. <laughs> right. and they might try. And that's the thing is people will try to tell you what your reality is. Yeah. What do you even, you know, it's like, and that's, and that's what's going on in the world today, obviously, because yeah. everybody goes, how can you not see how true my truth is? What are you, yeah. some kind of idiot? You know, and that's what's happening. And it's all wiring. That's the, it's the, the core of all of it. We're just, everybody's coming up against their own, you know, segments of, of wiring and belief systems and so yeah. on. It's all just thoughts and opinions and it's programming. And it's a lot and of, uh, you know, finger, it's finger pointing and people saying the reason I'm not doing well is because of you, because you're doing this. And there's, there's nothing more disempowering that takes away our true power than thinking that someone else's choices and decisions and their truths take away from us. Right. And, Complete and, you know, false. in some parts of the world that may be a lot more true, but here in most places that it, it's all mental, the whole, you're stopping yeah. me from doing this yeah. unless they're physically stopping you right it's it's you it's you yeah. ultimately you're making their decisions they're the things they say whatever it's all meaning it's all wiring it can be changed yeah that's that's all again that's the only the biggest message it can be changed and if you don't change it intentionally it'll probably be just changed with society or what you see in the news or the biggest trends we're just flowing with going with, and that's how most of us are going through life it's most people are not operating under free will. They think it is because they feel like they're making a conscious decision about something, but they're not looking about what is making that, what's driving that conscious decision. Because that conscious decision comes from a bunch of calculations about what's true about something. And we've already established that truth is completely subjective. Yeah, I, I still debate the idea that free will even exists in my head sometimes. Yeah. So here's what the, here's how I look at it. So there's the free will is what people think they have. And what we're really striving for is true, true will. And what I, I think the closest thing we can come to that is what we're doing here by waking up, like getting out of the unconscious uh, autopilot and really, really evaluating what are the choices that we're making so that we can take really, truly a more conscious choice, free if we can, to the extent of all the old wiring that is making us influence that. But yeah, but even then, even then, you know, like we're having this conversation, well, all kinds of stuff led me to this and a lot of most right. of it was autopilot. It's the you deeper know. down the wormhole you go. Um, again, that's, that that's a, that's, it's optional. 
you know, it's optional to go down that wormhole. Some people yeah. just like to philosophize, but that's what it, get, it keeps a lot of people stuck is they just talk about it all day long and they don't go sure. out there and be. Yeah. Yeah. I, f- I find it liberating. Um, and the reason why is because if you don't have free will and all you have is your, your essentially unfolding of your destiny, then what do you have to worry about? You just sit it's back gonna, and enjoy the movie, man. Take the ride. Sit back and enjoy the ride. Decide and to it, enjoy it, yes. And so it's like, in that sense of relief, the reason that it feels so good and so liberating, it's, I mean, it's kind of, it's got to be good for you. You know, you yeah, kind of just, get, you, you, set, you can set all of your, your, uh, your woes down and your fears. Well, anything, any thought process like that, that can eliminate the constant state of stress that most people are in will absolutely have a wonderful biological impact because most of us are running cortisol all the time yeah, and not even thinking about like, like if you were to tell them the, the, the damage that it's doing, they'd be like, well, what, I mean, they, they can't even compute it because getting rid of it is they go, well, how am I going to do that? I still, my life, I, this is it. I just got to get used to it. This is how it is. So you know, teach. That's why one of the things I've gotten into recently is breath work. Mm. I'm, I'm certified and working my way up all different certifications in that work because yeah. it does address a lot of the biology of you know stress, anxiety, but just our body chemistry and how we how we make meaning out of a situation is a lot of it is chemical because we have a reaction, the chemistry takes over, and it's even harder to then consciously override. You know, you might think, oh, I'm in autopilot, but the chemistry is so strong. You're so angry, or you're so stressed, or whatever that you just don't have it in you to, to, to make the other choice. And that's why we have lots of tools that you can use in those moments to, to deal with some of those emotional spikes. But it just, you know, it just takes such persistence knowing that there's going to be those days where it's like, well, this feels really challenging, mm. but making that just, but celebrating it, you can celebrate all of it. Yeah. I'm a big fan of breath work myself. Would you say that, the idea of true will is synonymous with synonymous with destiny. No, I would say. Um, I'm boy, trying to understand. Deep. So that's deep because that 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 gets that's so many. Like my brain just exploded with the depth, the layers of that question. <laughs> because dest- what is destiny? If destiny is a lack of like it's going to happen, then true will is is conceptually that we can change the course of things. But is it our destiny to change the course of things? <laughs> the paradox, man. It's the power of the paradox. I feel that's a, it's a great indicator of truth when it's a paradox to itself for me. Yeah, I think that's where I just, I, then I just have to kind of smile at it and go, yeah. you know, we've got an amazing brain, but we're not going to figure it all out. It, well, I, we're not you know, meant to. It's just like, let's just be here and take this ride that we're here to create our reality. We're yeah. here to interact with people, have an amazing experience, have all the feelings and just, you know, have this part of the universe wants us to have while yeah. we're in this form. Yeah. That's what we're here to do. And if we get entertained by thinking about this, that, and the other thing, that's great as long as it's entertaining. But if it's bogging us down and making us feel like we're unworthy or whatever, this is not good. It's toxic thinking and Fair it's enough. doing damage. Yeah, I can di- I dig it. <laughs> So um, if people want to get in touch with you and sign up for a, a coaching session or look at your materials, where do you suggest people go? Where do they get started? The quiz is a good first way to get introduced to me, but uh, there's meetbobdoyle.com is just, you know, the basic, here's everything Bob's up to website. Yeah. And so the quiz is there, speaking's there, coaching's there. So that might be a good start. Super easy to find on LinkedIn and Facebook as well. Do you have ukulele performances on there? My uke stuff is all on YouTube and I haven't posted a ton in the past little while since I've gotten serious about it. You really actually do less. (laughs) Oh, I was totally joking. I didn't know you actually had ukulele videos. Oh God. Yeah. There's a, like from like 10 years ago, there's a whole series I did of stamp jazz standards called the bathrobe sessions, which I actually did in a bathrobe. So yeah, there was a lot of stuff, but I, but I don't play like that at all anymore. It's like, that's the whole thing. It's like, as you evolve as a musician, you know, you listen to the old stuff and you go, Oh my God. Yeah. So it's out there, but because I got serious about it now, all my stuff about, well, now it has to be, you know, you know, I'm a musician who doesn't perform. So I've got that 
I love to do it when I'm, you know, it's just me. But as soon as I hit, I go live or hit a record, I go, I don't know how to move my fingers. Yeah. I, f- I feel like one of the, the best expressions of self-love and self-acceptance is musicians having to stomach people listening to their old music, man. <laughs> Gosh. And for us, it's, it's interesting because some people are like, still like, dude, your first album's the best. What are you going to do another one like that? I'm like, dude, I was like 19 when I did that, man. That sounds so bad. I don't understand why people like it. Yes. So, okay, good. I'm glad to know that it's not just me, but yeah, I can't, I just can't. And back then I thought I was like, oh, I'm doing different stuff. I'm not yeah. just playing like other ukulele players. Uh, old, well, expansion, you know, expansion is the, it's, it's, it's the constant as a human. So if, if you're not growing and looking back at what you've done and going, oh, well, gosh, I've come so far, then, you know. That's right. Doing much. And that's another thing that people, if there's a takeaway from this conversation, also that, you know, having what you want, expansion, expansion. It's the nature of the universe, infinitely expanding. We're a part of the universe. We're here to expand and grow. And if we don't, that's when we start the depression and the anxiety and all these other things. Yeah. We're not growing we're not doing what we are is our nature to do we're using the this incredibly powerful thing called the brain to limit our own growth we're doing it to ourselves and so it feels terrible and that's why people are depressed and medicated and angry and all all of that stuff it doesn't have to be that way i feel like humans are we're far more like dogs like than we want to admit you know like we need structure we need we need goals we need a job and so when we can occupy our when we can occupy ourselves with very specific ways of growing, like, hey, I want to do this, and this is where I want to go, and this is how I'm going to get there. I mean, depression and anxiety just fold away. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think that depression so much is because a person doesn't feel they have the ability to express who they really are. And that yeah. can be in relationships, it could be in career, it could be anywhere, but that I feel is where people are feeling the most. And it could be like, I can't do it because I don't have enough money, whatever it is, they can't express themselves. And so depression sits in. Yeah. It's not universal, but that is why I see a lot of people who are depressed because of that. Yeah. Um, I cannot express the gratitude that I have for, for you coming on, man. Um, you and your team reaching out to us. And um, when I found out, you know, that you're interested in coming on here, man. I was, I was, um, uh, truly honored, you know, just the impact that the work that you've done and that it's already had in my life. So, um, I am grateful for you doing what you do. I appreciate uh, and, that. That's always good to hear. It's, your dedication, you know, it's, man. It's one of those, it's one of those, it's, especially since it wasn't what I set out in my life to do the fact that it has made any kind of impact is still sometimes stunning to me because I feel like I'm still just this broadcaster goofy guy. So it's always really, really, I don't know what the word is, but when I hear that from people and I do um, about the secret in general or something I've done, it's really, it's, it's quite amazing. And I'm very grateful. So thank you. Well, not only that, you're continuing to expand on it. You continue, you're continuing to expand on the idea and go uh, farther down the rabbit hole to improve people's lives even more. Yeah. I'm actually hoping, I mean, it is down a rabbit hole, but I'm hoping that it doesn't feel like that. I'm, I'm really trying to simplify it. I'm really trying to tell people it does not have to be so many freaking steps or processes or techniques or whatever. Just oh, it's, a, it's mostly a decision. Absolutely. But in order for you to know how to describe that to people, you have to f- First, it's go true. there yourselves and it's experience true. the roadblocks and the ways in which it's, um, you know, distracting to keep people on the right path. And that was That's my true. point. Yep. So you're, you're doing right. a great job. Um, it's been a pleasure having you here, Bob. Thank you, Evan. Great to be here. Yeah, this is the Living in Dubious the Podcast. Theory, and and the game. All Whatever you focus upon becomes your truth. That was fun, dude.